bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to another Living Faith stream. We love you. We love you. Listen, start your watch parties. Listen, we on Facebook. We on YouTube. Get 10 people and let them know Living Faith is live. Amen. We're here to worship. We're here to give God praise. We're going to have First Lady uh, uh, come and pray for us like she always does. She's been giving us wonderful prayers and it almost turns into a, a prayer revival. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. So listen, we want you. Did she preach so on last week? I know y'all enjoyed that message on last week. Come what may is still a yes. And so listen, we want you also, um, 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 I want you to make sure if you're not here, if you wasn't here on last week, uh, you missed our outdoor service, but that's all right. That's all right. You'll get it next time. All right. So we're trying our best to make sure that we see each other, that we fellowship with each other, but we want to pray and get the service. So text 10 people, start your watch parties, go on there, go on your page, go on, on, on YouTube. Let everybody know living faith cathedral is live and where God is the spirit and where freedom is the spirit of the Lord is. Amen. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we worship in our house. So get your in the upright position. Get yourself in the proper position where you can give God the right praise. Don't just lay down in the bed. Get up, get up, get up. Don't be lazy. Give God an intentional praise. Give God an intentional worship and watch what God does in your life. Amen. Say amen. First lady's going to pray for us right now. Amen. Come on. It's time to usher the spirit of the Lord in wherever we are. Come on. I'm going to ask that you bring your minds in. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Close your eyes if you need to. Whatever you need to do, bring the family together. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you today. Thank you for blessing us to see another day that was not promised to us. Thank you, Lord God, for waking us up, blessing us to be clothed in our right mind. Lord God, we know that it is because of you, in the name of Jesus, that we are still here. Because it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. And God, we ask that you visit us in this service today. Ask that you visit us in our homes, God, wherever we are. Ask that you allow your spirit, your presence, Lord God, to permeate in the name of Jesus. Ask that you send your anointing, your anointing that destroys yoke, your anointing that drives demons, your anointing Lord God that lifts up the heavy heart, your anointing that restores the mind, your anointing God that quickens our spirits. And Lord God we ask that you come in the house, come in the room, come in the building, come in the church, come in the car, wherever we are God. We welcome you in today, asking that you have your way. In the name of Jesus, we don't take for granted that we need you. But Lord God, we pray and we plead that you visit us today. Yeah. Send your power, send your anointing. Let your spirit, Lord God, hover over us in the name of Jesus. Lord God, drive out every demon of distraction. Drive out every demon that comes to take our minds from the things of God. Drive out every devil that comes to take our minds from listening and being in tune with you. God, we want to be in tune with what you're doing in this season. Father, we want to be in tune with how you're moving this season. Lord God, whatever you do, God, don't do it without us. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask that you cleanse our ear gate, God, for everything that we've taken in that would keep us from getting your word. Ask that you clean our minds, God. Restore our minds, God. In the name of Jesus, renew our minds, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, ask that you create, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, God. We can't do nothing without you. But we need your power. We can't do nothing without you. But we need your spirit. We can't do nothing without you. But we need your anointing in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that before we go any further, Lord God, that you visit us in the name of Jesus. Before we go any further, we ask that your power come in the room. Before we do anything else, we ask that your anointing, Lord God, begin to hover over us in the name of Jesus. Lord, walk in our houses, walk in our bedrooms, walk in our living rooms, in the name of Jesus, wherever we are, God, sit in the car with us, sit on the couch with us, in the name of Jesus, get a hold of our families, get a Get a hold of our minds. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we welcome you. We welcome you. Come on, wherever you are, come on, tell them, God, you're welcome. Come on, tell them, Lord, we welcome you. Come on, tell them, yes, come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It says he inhabit the praises of his people. Come on, let God know that we welcome you. Come on, put those hands together. Tell them, God, you are welcome. Come on, put those hands together. 
tell them, God, we are welcome you. Come on in the room. Come on in our hearts. Come on in our minds. Come on in our spirit. We need you. Oh, we need you. Yes, God. Now, come on, give them praise. Come on, you know protocol. When the presence of the Lord enters the room, every hand should be raised. Every heart should be glad. Every mind should be on him. You want to clap your hands and tell him, God, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you. If God is there, whatever ain't like him has to go. Come on, tell him, we welcome you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we want you to have your way. Want you to have your way, God. And we bless your name today. And we wait in expectation for what you're getting ready to do. How you're about to empower and quicken us. And we give you all the glory, God, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Come on, let's get ready to give God some praise. He's Hallelujah. worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are, come on, let's lift his name on high. He's an awesome God. He's worthy. Come on, God, we lift you higher than our problems. We lift you higher than our circumstances. We lift you higher than our situation. You're King of kings and you're Lord of lords. And we give you praise today, God. There's nobody like you. We say that we lift you high. We say that we give you glory. We worship your name today. Wherever you are, you know that he's worthy. Come on and clap your hands with us. As we love on you, receive our love, receive our love, yeah. As we shout your name, receive our praises, receive our praises as we love, say, on you. It says receive our love. We want you to receive our love, yeah, as we shout. Your awesome name, oh God. Receive our praises. Receive our praises. Your name is high. Be glorified. his name today. Let's sing it from the top. As we love, As we love on, you, on you, yeah. Receive our love. Receive our we love. want you to receive our, receive love. our love. It says, As we shout your name. It says, Receive our praises. Receive our praises. Come on, sing. As we
We serve an awesome God. And today we just want to lift that up right there. Come on, lift up your Hallelujah. voice and give God praise. Hallelujah. God, you're so mighty. God, you're so wonderful, God. Come on, this song simply just says he's mighty. He's holy. He's awesome. Go lift up your voice and give God praise. We serve a mighty God Say we serve a holy God Say we serve an awesome God Say my Savior, my Savior Everybody say we serve a mighty God Yes, and we serve We serve a holy God Yes, and we serve an awesome God we serve an awesome God. Say my Savior. My Savior. My Savior. Yes, we serve. We serve a mighty You believe in this lifting up right there. Say we serve a holy God. Yeah. Say we serve a mighty. We serve an awesome God. Say my Savior. Say my Savior. Say you are. You are the great I am. Yes, you are. You are the king. 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 You are the we serve a holy God. We serve a holy God. Lift up your voice and say, We, we serve, serve an awesome God. Yes, and my Savior. 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 My
Jesus, my wonderful, wonderful counselor. To you are, you are. Like you believe it, just lift up right here. You are my angel, so holy. You are 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 holy. Whatever God is to you, your Savior, your healer, your Redeemer, I dare you to lift it up and give God praise. Lord, you're mighty. God, you're holy. Lord, you're awesome. Go lift it up right here. Yeah. See, you are, 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 you're everything. You are, I need you to be, you are, see, you are, you are, I joy. You are the love of my life, everything. You are, say you are, 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 you are. You're my healer, God. You're my protector, Jesus. You're my savior, Jesus. You're my provider, Jesus. You're my mother, when when I need you, Jesus. You're my father, Lord. When I need you, Jesus. You're my protector, Jesus. You are Yahweh, Lord. You're everything I need. You're everything I need. Thank you, Lord. You are. You are. You are. The love of my life. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and give God a praise. God, you're everything. God, you're mighty, God. Lord, you reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say you're my everything. Hallelujah. You're my everything. You're my everything. Hallelujah. Come on, you're my everything. Hallelujah. Because he is my everything, I can call him for anything. Hallelujah, because he is my everything, I can call him for anything. Hallelujah, the song says, I will call yeah, yeah, yeah. upon the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, because he is worthy to be praised. Amen, if we come to call on the Lord, it's time to get on up, come on, worship and praise. Come on, it's time to give him some praise this morning and put those yeah. hands together, because he is worthy to be clap, clap, clap.
Come on, you ought to feel the power of God right now. Come on, you ought to feel the power of God right now. Come on, come on, come on. You ought to feel the power of God right now. Come on, give God the best praise you got. Give God the best praise you got right now. Come on, I know you feel it in your bedroom, in your living room, on your job, wherever you're watching. If you're watching Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, God is here. Woo! God is wherever you need him to be right now. There's only one. How many know there's only one? There's only one. There's only one. Brother Monty, there's only one. One God, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. There's only one. There's only one. And because there's only one, I give my Lord and Savior the best praise I got right now. How many can give God the best hallelujah you got right now? How many can give him the best thank you, Jesus, you got right now? If you only had one praise left, if you only had one breath left, what would you give him? Give it to him right now for 30 seconds. Clap those hands. Chief, I need my towel. Clap those hands and tell God thank you. Chief. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God is a good God. Yes, God, yes, God. Woo, I feel the power of God in this place. Y'all could have kept singing that. There's only one when I need him to heal my body. There's only one when I need him to show up. There's only one when I need a miracle. There's only one when I need him to watch my children. There's only one when I'm going through something. And in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Oh, God. Yes, 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 God. God is a good God. Hallelujah. 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 I don't want to let it go, but I'm going to let it go. I don't want to do another two-hour stream. Amen. But I thank God. There's only one. Brother Marcus, there's only one. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo! Woo! Y'all ever just feel like that God is up to something? No matter what everybody else is saying, you just know within your spirit God is up to something. Sister Linda, no matter what's going on in your life, you say God is up to something. I know what I see, and I know what I'm hearing, but I know what I feel. And what I feel is different than what I see and what I hear. Woo, God. And I love when sometimes you got to see it before you see it or you'll never see it. I need to know if you can see yourself blessed right now. If you can see yourself better right now. If you can see bigger, brighter, better right now. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's move on. Woo, my God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm. My God. <laughs> All right. Listen, we want you right now to get prepared to give. Amen. We love you so much. We thank you for supporting this ministry. We thank you for all that you've done. Come here, son. We thank you for all that you're doing to help support this ministry. We thank you for those of you that have been um, giving and, and, and sowing and of your time, talent, and treasure. We got such a wonderful staff. And we thank God for our music department. Amen. We thank God for all of our musicians. We thank God for our video and cameramen. We thank God for our sound men, our ushers, our deacons. Amen. We thank God for everyone that just comes to help out, to help try to keep this this service going and lively and 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 we just wanted to let you know the membership we appreciate you listen i want to have a zoom membership and they're streaming the different ways that you can give givelify you can give by cash app you can give p.o box 1716 lancaster california 93539 or you can call our merchant at 661-674-5424 amen but listen we want you to make sure that you're sowing and that you're establishing yourself with God. God is doing, I've been getting so many testimonies. I saw a heartbreaking video uh, last week about folks being put out of their house in Texas and just hundreds of folks just now have to hit the street. And listen, if you have a house to sleep in, if you have a roof over your head, if you got clothes on your back, if you got food in your belly, I don't care anything about your wants, thank God he provided your need. And you ought to just tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. And so every dollar that you get, give God a dime out of it. Let him know, Lord, I appreciate it. God, I thank you. And we're asking right now that you continue to sow to this ministry, continue to give to this ministry. We're not begging. We're asking you to partner with us. Partner with us. Help us to continue to do what we do. Amen. We love you. We thank God. I know uh, the service outside may have been hot, but we thank God for those of you. It's 100 degrees, but we thank God for those of you that participated with us. We thank you for those of you that came and hollered. Uh, 
uh, I told y'all to come in, in, in your picnic clothes. So if you didn't come in your picnic clothes and you was hot, I don't know what to tell you. Um, so we're going to keep trying to do as much as we can outdoor service once a month, maybe twice a month as they cool down. I just want to see the saints. And it's so, listen, your pastor's a people person. I love people. I love hanging around people. When I wasn't saved, I was the party house. When I wasn't saved, I was the one that you could come and don't steal, but you can come kick it. Now, if you stole, I beat you up. But if, as long as you was at my house and we was cool, it was all right. So I'm that dude. I love it. You know, first lady, she can eat her cookies and watch Netflix all day. But I, I love, I love to just hang around people and just, just hug and just find out what's going on. I'm that dude. So it, it'll be so good when we can get back to normality of the saints worshiping together. But until then, make sure that you are watching our streams. Make sure you're watching our Bible studies. Make sure you're getting the word of God. Don't just surf, y'all. When your church is on, stay with your That's church. Right. And then surf afterwards, all right? Watch everybody else. I like John Hanna, too. I like T.D. Right. Jakes, too. I like, uh, what's what's my man? My, Mike Todd. I like Mike Todd, too. And I like, what's the other guy that's real big? Um, my, my white uh, pastor, my white pastor, Stephen Furtick. I like him, too. I like all of them. Amen. But when your pastor's on, make sure you watch that's your pastor, right, all right? Yes, make sure right. that you're sharing your pastor, all right? That's I don't right. think I'm no less than any of, of, of them. I don't think our band is no less than any of them. We got the baddest band in the world right now. Amen. We got the baddest singers. Can't nobody else sing our singers, I mean, unless they they anointed, and we just as good as the rest. Amen. Oh, with that being said, come on up, Brother Monty. I want y'all to give Brother Monty a hand. I didn't get a chance to announce it last week, but I'm going to let him um, say something that's going on that went on, and, and I don't know if it's aired already or it will air. It's already aired, and so um, um, did we find out the results? Did we, do we know we hadn't found out the results? Okay, so I'm going to let you say what platform we're on. Just a real quick one minute. Where your mic at? Grab a mic. Give him a mic. Give him a mic that he can talk on, and just, just tell us what God did. Bless you. You got uh, 90 seconds. Roll with it, man. I ain't going to even take 90. Uh, first of all, God is amazing. Um, I was privileged to submit a song that we've been singing for forever, and it's been laying around for almost nine years now. And God had the favor to send it to a Grammy award-winning, Stella award-winning choir that is just now released. So, Victorious, the song that y'all always singing, it's out everywhere now. Yeah. So just know that even though the vision Terry, God is going to do just what he said. Amen. Amen. And I want us to sing that again soon. So you got to teach us to build to them so we can learn it. That is a bomb. I didn't, I, it was so good. I didn't believe he wrote it. I kept calling like, you wrote this? Like, Bishop, yeah. We, I said, but we've been singing. He said, I know, Bishop. It's a couple of songs y'all been singing that I wrote. So, hey, man, it's good to have Ricky yeah. Dillard. Who? We got Monty Smith. What? Right, hey, Smith. I'm sorry, Adolfo M. Smith. Okay. Hey, man, y'all don't know his real name. His real name is Adolf. Adolfo. Adolf <laughs> Monty Smith. You know. Amen. So we got his mic, please. <laughs> Amen. I'm his bishop. I can do that. So we thank God. So listen, let's continue to sow. We love you. Let's get into the word of the Lord. We thank you, um, praise team. We love you. Um, I'm not sure if there's any more announcements. Uh, Y'all know that we always have our marriage ministry, so please continue to check uh, our, our, our Facebook pages. Continue to check out our, our websites for when we have a marriage ministry, our men's ministry, when we have our youth ministries, um, Wednesday nights, our, our LFC millennials. We have so much going on. Our youth, our uh, children's church is getting ready to start. We have Sunday school popping off, and we're getting ready to start our ministry classes again. So listen, we are still doing ministry. We love you. We thank God for all of you that are helping us to continue to do excellent ministry on a larger scale. All right? The Bible told us that we will go throughout the ends of the earth. Who knew that he would be talking about television and radio waves and amen. And we just thank God for you allowing us to do what we do. We're getting ready to hit another platform. We're getting ready to do something even greater. Come with more high depth, more quality, more uh, presentation. And we just want to make sure that whatever we do for God, we do it top notch. So we thank you so much. Shout out again to Brother Mike. Brother Mike, come here, man. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. I need the camera still on. Come on. I want y'all to give a shout out to this young man. Come on, y'all. Amen. I appreciate this young man. This young man 
puts in probably 12, 13 hours, amen. And he's the one that's been helping us do our streams. He's the one that's been editing all our videos. He's the one that, amen, I fuss at him, I yell at him. He's just like a son to me now, amen. We get into it and we text each other. Cause he's a true son out here. At first I was holding back on him, but now I was fussing at him today. But amen, I love him to death and we appreciate it. And he puts in so much work. He's always calling me with new stuff and what's coming on. I know I'm not supposed to be touching him and hugging him, but I love this young man. And I want y'all, when y'all when y'all see this, just give a shout out to Mike. And just say, Mike, we love you from Living Faith, all right? God bless you, brother Mike. We appreciate you, man. He's going to continue to keep filming. My daughter has been doing a great job. But Kamari is going to be filming. And so we just thank God for everyone. It takes teamwork to make a dream work, amen? It takes dream work to make a, did I say that wrong? Teamwork to make a dream work, all right? So we appreciate all you that are here. Amen. Let's get into the word of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 7. Father, I ask you right now, help me to preach that that is sound doctrine. Let me do no damage to your word. Hide me behind the cross. Forgive me of any sin that I have committed and all of us that have committed, God. Help us to be right. Use me today. Let me preach, God, your word, your all unadulterated gospel. Don't let me put any man's wisdom in it. Let it be straight biblical from your Bible. We'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, 2 Timothy 1 verse. I was, I was listening to a mentor, big brother of mine, and we were talking, and the Lord put this in my spirit when we were talking. And the Lord told me to tell the saints, to preach from this to the saints. So I pray that this will bless you. Second Timothy, very familiar scripture, um, one through seven, uh, uh, chapter one, verse seven. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. The next version says one of power, love, and sound judgment. The Amplified Version said, God did not give us the spirit of timidity or cowardice of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, Darius, well-balanced mind and self-control. I want to talk from the subject, and I'm going to do my best. Um, try not to hit that key, man. I ain't going to tuck my ear, so don't, don't push me. Um, my faith is bigger than my fear. My faith is bigger than my fear. My faith is bigger than my fear. Many times when you hear the word fear in the Old Testament, the Bible tells us to fear God. And as a child, I used to literally think that you fear God, like the trembling fear that you get from a parent when you've done something wrong or the fear you get when your parent is getting ready to discipline you or back in the day when the teachers would say, I'm going to call your parents or the fear that um, many of us have been talking in, in social uh, climate today of the fear of African-Americans have with officers when they're pulled over, the fear that one may have when they're being robbed, the fear that one has when their job is on the line, the fear of losing your house, that trepidation, that fear, that loss. We are always assume that when the scripture said fear God, that it meant that. But then as we begin to grow in the word of God and in the word study, we understood that that type of fear was talking about reverence fear. When you fear God, you respect him, you honor him, you, 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 um, uh, allow him. You worship him. It's saying, God, I understand that you are Lord of everything. It's an honor, reverence, respect. It's what you do to a sovereign king. It's what you do to a president. It's what you do to people that you that you hold dearly to and that have done great accomplishments. You fear them, and for lack of a better word from the Old Testament, is I reverence them. But in this scripture, it was literally talking about the first fear that I talked. It is talking about a fear or the definition of fear in this is uh, not to be in the spirit of timidity or cowardice, timidity or cowardice. One of the first things that most most men that are in the household, whether in the household or even if they're single fathers and they get their child. One of the things, the first thing that they teach their son is do not be scared of any man. Most fathers teach their sons, you respect a man. And you talk to a man, but some of the first lessons that I learned from my father was look a man in the eye when you talk. Shake his hand firm. 
He's a man just like you. Uh, hold your head up. Don't cower down. If somebody puts their hands on them, on you, make sure they never put their hands on you again. You stand up for yourself. And because I was the oldest, I was always taught that not only do I defend myself, but I defend my siblings. So I didn't have the chance or the ability or the luxury of being a coward. My job was not only to defend myself, but Marcus and Bridget and then eventually Lee, it was my job to make sure that if anything happened on my watch, it was my job to defend my family. I grew up in Inglewood, California, and you would be tested if you was um, any type of young man growing up. There was going to be one point in your life from elementary school to high school that you were going to be tested. You may not have to fight, but you was going to be tested. And I thought about in this, when Paul is speaking to Timothy, it is amazing that Paul uses this type of fear. He tells Timothy, he is saying, listen, Timothy, I anointed you, but God gave you the gift. I have placed you in a very powerful position as pastor of one of the churches that I have started. And what I do not and cannot afford, what I do not want you to do, and I cannot afford for you to do, is not to be bold enough to defend the faith. Now, we are living in a time where no one seems to want to defend the faith. The faith of what? The faith of the, faith of the gospel, the Jesus Christ, that he was born of a, man, of a virgin. He, he came as God, wrapped in flesh. He lived 33 and a half years. He died on the cross. He rose again on the third day so that we can have our redemption, that we can be born again, that we can have eternal life. And that is the gospel that we are to preach. We are not necessarily to preach the gospel. God's going to give you a Rolls Royce. We are not to preach that God's going to give you a brand new house, that God's going to have you have pockets of, of cash in four pockets and, and that you're going to have the baddest wife or the baddest husband or, or you're going to have four degrees. That's not what we are supposed to teach. Those are byproducts, God help me teach, of living a life. The Bible says when a man's ways please God, he'll make his enemies be at peace. So God will make enemies bow down to you when you serve him. The Bible says I'll give you the desires of your of your heart but that means that you got to desire God so yes God will give you things the Bible tells us to make sure that we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things what things the things that you want if you want a Rolex there's nothing wrong with that if you want a bad house there's nothing wrong with that but you can't want the Rolex more than you want God you can't want a wife or husband more than you want God. You can't want a six-figure family more than you want God. And Paul, even though Christianity is new, it's in the sec a third and, and a second and third century, Paul is already seeing people fall away from the gospel. They're doing weird stuff. He has to write to his churches, Deacon Sam, and say, why are y'all sleeping around? Why? Where's all this fornication coming from? And how is stepmothers and stepsons sleeping around? How is it that y'all allowing folks with the spirit of witchcraft to come into your church and bewitch you when you've seen the true power of the Holy Ghost. Paul is coming in the church and he's upset with them because they're suing each other over who didn't give me enough money for my wheat and you didn't give me the money for the barley and you didn't pay me for my wine and he's upset with them. Then they have the audacity to celebrate the Lord's death on communion and they're getting drunk and they're bragging on how much food they have. Some people when they celebrate communion got tons of food. Other folks only got bread and crackers and you got this the haves against the have nots and Paul is saying what is going on around here this is not why you got saved and so he starts to put pastors in churches and he's letting them know listen Timothy yes you're the youngest pastor yes you're in your 20s yes you're, you're young and they may mess with you but what I cannot afford for you to be is a coward I cannot afford for you to teach, uh, 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 be scared to teach holiness just because you're in a sinful world. Now, I know people are saying the world has gotten more sinful, but let me tell you something. The Greeks was about as crazy as Californians are today. The Greeks was doing every sin that, that we're doing right now, the Greeks were doing it. Every, every, every sexual sin, every, every drug, every drink, every habit, it may be under a new name, but y'all don't understand. We ain't dealing with no new devils. We dealing with some angels 
cursing demons. And that's what's wrong with some of us. We didn't mess around and became so carnal that we can't recognize an ancient spirit that was in Big Mama and that was in your mama and now trying to knock on your door. You can't recognize a spirit that was in great granddaddy and was in granddaddy and now it's knocking on your door. You can't recognize a spirit that you dealt with in high school and you scratching your head while your child is acting funny. You need to say, I've seen you before, devil, and I'm not going to allow you. I ain't got no time to be a coward. Now I got to step up and be the man or woman of God that God has called me to be. And so the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power. And that's the problem that God is having with us right now. God said, when I went back to the earth, uh, went back to heaven from earth, I did not leave you powerless. Matter of fact, in the last parts of his life and in the last 40 days after he had risen, he discusses with the disciples. He says, listen, you need to go to the upper room before when you did ministry. I empowered you. I laid hands on you. I sent you out two by two. But now that I am gone, help me teach Holy Ghost. I need you to go to the upper room. Don't lay hands on nobody else. Don't cast out no more demons. Don't pray for nobody else. Don't teach another sermon. But I need you to go to the upper room. And that is the problem with us right now. Many of us have not been to the upper room. You've been to every other room. You've been to the club room. You've been to the hooker lounge. You've been to your friend's room. You've been to pool parties. You've been to everything else, but you ain't been to the upper room. You, you've you been going over to everybody's living room. You've been in people's bedrooms. Oh, God, help me in here. You've been in folks' Facebook rooms. And you've been in chat rooms, but you ain't been in the upper room. And that is the problem right now with many of us is that we ain't spent time with God and Jesus is saying before he gets back to heaven and before he ascends in the cloud after 40 days of his resurrection he says I need you to receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost and he begins to tell them that after you receive the Holy Ghost he did not say that you were speaking tongues. Notice what Jesus said. He says, after you receive the Holy Ghost, he didn't say that it will make you dance a cute shout and make you just speak in a hundred tongues at 120 per beat. He didn't say that it will make you frown up and make you look anointed. But he said, after that you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. Oh, God, help me in here. And what is that power for? Not to walk stuck up, not to have a hundred armor bearers, not to have 15 titles after your name not to start a mega church but he says you shall receive power in other words to go out and to be witnesses in other words I am going to give you the power in other words I'm going to give you bonus to teach my gospel and I got to let you know and Jesus had already told them listen the world is not going to like you uh, the Bible says that the world loves they own and don't be scared or don't be don't be looking around like something is wrong because people don't like you uh, you want everybody to be your friend well let me tell you something baby uh, if you are a Christian uh, you're going to have some enemies uh, because the daddy and them don't like you and your daddy uh, there are some spirits that just ain't going to click with you uh, uh, there are some folks that ain't going and you ain't did nothing to them. Uh, you have smiled at them. Uh, you have even helped them. Uh, but the spirit in them don't like the spirit in you. Uh, and so what you have to make sure that you understand uh, that if you are suffering from fear too much, uh, maybe you don't have the power uh, that you think you have. Uh, there is no way that a man is going to walk up in my house uh, and I got a shotgun in my house. I literally got a double pump shotgun in my house right now. Uh, there is no way that a man's gonna walk up in my house Deacon Sam uh, and I got a shotgun uh, with double barrel bullets uh, and he's got a knife uh, and I'm gonna put my shotgun down uh, and say please don't hurt me uh, what is wrong with you uh, I got a range weapon uh, I can shoot you before you get to me y'all Mr. Revelation uh, you got to come close to me uh, but I got a range weapon uh, y'all the Mr. Revelation uh, I got a range weapon I can release a praise huh and where i am right now it'll get to where it needs to be huh i got faith that got legs huh i got a word that i can speak ahead of time huh I got power huh? because at the name of Jesus, huh? every knee shall bow and every tongue. Y'all ain't helping me in here. Oh, my God. But I'm coming to tell you right now, huh? you better learn to use your power. Huh? And so there's a few things that happens to the child of God huh? when they allow fear to overtake their life. Huh? 
and this is what Paul is saying. Listen, Paul, uh, Paul is saying to Timothy, listen, Timothy, uh, I do not need you to be a coward. Uh, you can't be no coward and a gangbanger. Uh, your own hood will jump you. Uh, you can't be a coward and be in leadership. Uh, you got to be able, there's been many times, and I know my membership loves me, uh, but there's been many times that I had to make unpopular decisions, uh, that I had to make unpopular choices, uh, that even my own wife was scratching her head about. Uh, but if you're going to be a leader, you got to understand uh, that number one, you can deal with the decision uh, when you know that it's not for you, but it's for the betterment of the ministry. Uh, a true leader will never make a decision uh, just for their own selfish gains. Uh, you ain't got a real pastor. Uh, if he's telling you to take a pay cut, then he won't take one. Huh? You ain't got a real pastor. Huh? If he's telling you to wash clothes or wash the toilets, then he won't wash them. Huh? You ain't got a real pastor huh? that tells you to catch the bus to church, and he won't do it. Huh? You ain't got a real leader huh? that when he tells you to do something, and then he laughs behind your back huh? and say, I'll never do that. Huh? But I when you are a real leader huh? and when you lead with effectiveness huh? there are times that you will stand alone huh? but can I suggest to you that you're never alone huh? as long as you got Jesus huh? and so I want to tell you a couple of things right now huh? number one the reason why you cannot afford to be fearful is huh? Because fear can become a prison. Huh? Fear has the ability to make you have three responses. Huh? Fight, flight, or freeze. Huh? Now, two of them make sense. Huh? Sometimes I can't fight everybody because I'm getting jumped. And y'all remember back in the day, huh? if Druckers was going to jump you, you may have them things. Huh? But you can't. This ain't karate movie. Huh? You can't fight ten people. You better learn to run. Huh? So fear will cause you to run. Huh? Fear will cause you to fight. Huh? But the worst thing that fear can make you do is freeze. Huh? And that is the problem with us right now. Huh? The devil don't want you to flee. Huh? The devil don't even want you to fight. Huh? He wants you to stay stagnant in where you are. Huh? I'm scared to make a move. Huh? I'm scared to trust God. Huh? I'm scared to move in the will of God. Huh? It's just like what First Lady said. It's still yes. Huh? No matter what comes my way. That's why I've been teaching for years huh? that you got to have the word yeah, staff. Huh? I got to do what God told me to do. Huh? Even while facing the middle of the trial, I'm going to continue to do what God told me to do huh, in the midst of the trial. Huh? Yes, I see an obstacle. Huh? And yes, I don't know if I can conquer it. Huh? But if I got God on my side huh, and I believe that I got the Holy Ghost huh, and I've heard the word from God, huh, everything is going to be all right. Huh? So Fear can make you be in a prison. Huh? It'll make you have an imaginary jail cell that ain't there. Huh? If you raise a dog on the chain huh? and you keep that dog on the chain long enough, huh? it's just like a zoo animal. Huh? The reason why they break zoo animals is, is that they put them on a peg. Huh? And as that animal is growing up, it continues to walk in a circle on the chain. Huh? And it walks it and walks it for hours. Huh? It is a known psychological fact huh? that anybody that wants to get good at something. Uh, they got to at least study it or practice it for 10,000 hours. Huh? So can you imagine walking an elephant for 10,000 hours? Huh? That's about two years at about 10 hours a day huh? that you're walking a beast that's used to having something around this neck. Well, something happened psychologically huh? where now you can take the chain off huh? but the elephant will never go no farther huh? than what it's been programmed to be. Huh? And that's what we call young men that keeps getting locked up. We say they're institutionalized. Huh? They are out of prison, huh? but they still act like they're locked up. Huh? And that's what the devil is trying to do to us mentally. Huh? He's trying to spiritually institutionalize your faith. Huh? He's trying to tell you you'll never be greater. Huh? You'll never go further. Huh? You'll never have better. Huh? But I need somebody to yell bigger, brighter, better. Huh? Y'all ain't said nothing on that chat. Huh? I need you to say bigger, brighter, better. Huh? If you can't spell it, just put triple B. Huh? Bigger, brighter, better. Better, huh? I believe and I know, huh? And if God said it, huh, that settles it. Huh? So I will not allow fear to put me in an imaginary prison. Huh? Kind of like when you was a kid. Me and my wife was laughing about this not too long ago. When you were a kid huh, and when you in the dark, huh, everything looks like a monster. Huh? You will snatch your coat down because huh, your coat looked like a monster. Huh? My, my wife said that she, Brianna said that she couldn't stand Barbie dolls huh, because they look like monsters to her. Huh? And so she would never have Barbie dolls. Huh? I remember when I used to have uh, the other day 
is scared the devil out of it. I didn't even tell my wife this. Man, I almost swung and broke one of my, uh, my beautiful pieces that I ironed my clothes with. I messed around and had a jacket on my, on my steamer. Huh? And when I got up to go to the bathroom, it looked like a man was standing in my bedroom. Huh? I almost karate chopped and I, boy, huh? I turned into Jackie Chan so quick. And then I got embarrassed. I said, oh my God, that's my jacket on my steamer. Huh? And many times what happens is uh, fear makes you see stuff uh, that is not there. Oh, my God. Fear plays with you. Huh? Fear plays games with you. Huh? In other words, number two, here it is. Huh? Fear makes you lose your focus. Huh? Fear makes you lose your focus. Because when you're fearful, you'll start crying. Huh? It's hard to see when you're crying. Huh? The worst thing you can do is drive when you're emotional. Huh? Because you got tears in your eyes. Huh? You're angry and you're mad. Huh? Especially if you got fierce anger and fear. I mean, anybody could do anything and you're ready to fight them and everybody else that you're trying to get before you get to the person you're ready to fight. Huh? And so you got to be careful because fear will cause you to focus on the minor huh? instead of focusing on the major. Huh? You got to be careful because fear makes things look bigger than what they are. Huh? Fear is like the mirror on the side of your, of your car huh? where it says about images may appear smaller than what they really are. Huh? What fear does the opposite. Fear makes things appear, appear bigger than what they really are. Let me say something to you. Huh? If God is your partner Huh? and you're in business with God huh? why are you dreaming so small I'm going to say that again. Huh? If God is your partner huh? and the God that created the earth, the moon, the stars, huh? the universe, the wind, huh? God created your molecular structure. Huh? God got millions of miles of veins and arteries and hearts and your brain and, and all of the airwaves and everything that goes on in your body. If God is your partner, huh? why are you dreaming so small? Huh? And why are you so scared huh? that what he said, he can't bring it to pass? Huh? The devil is a liar. Huh? And so one, number two, you got to make sure that fear does not make you lose your focus. Huh? You got to stay focused. The camera's on me right now. Huh? And she don't want it blurry. She wants it. She don't want me to run up on the camera. Huh? She wants me to make sure that I'm in focus. Huh? When you in fear, you lose the range. Huh? But when you come back to faith, God shows you everything. Huh? Oh, I come to tell you right now. Huh? The Bible says don't walk in fear, huh? but he says to walk in faith. Huh? And I come to tell you that God will correct your vision huh? when you stop walking in fear. Number three, huh? fear makes you listen to outside influences. Huh? I am so tired of Christians. I'm so tired of all these deaf, spiritual deaf Christians. Huh? Jonathan, I don't know what to do huh? with all these folks that say they say huh? and got the Holy Ghost huh? and they ain't never got a word from God on themselves. Huh? You mean to tell you with all the praying that you're doing huh? and with all the fasting that you're doing huh? and with all the Holy Ghost that you have, huh? God ain't said nothing to you. Huh? As daddy used to say, there's a dead cat on the line. Huh? Something is wrong. Either you're not praying huh? or you're not doing doing what you say you're doing. You can read the Bible huh, and get an answer for your situation. Huh? I know there's a witness out there that you've been going through something huh, and you can read a scripture and it'll jump in your spirit huh, and say, God, thank you for that word. Huh? You didn't hear nothing audible, just the words. Spoke. There's enough word in those 66 books huh, to take you the rest of your life. Huh? I need somebody to type all I need is a word. All I need is a word. Huh? All I need is a word. Huh? Now, what we talk about is rhema word. Huh? We want a right now word. Huh? And the problem is we think God talks to people every day. Huh? But can I suggest to you that God is so vast? God is so concentrated. God is so powerful that when he gives you something, many times it's not a day to day thing. Huh? When God gives you something to do, many times it's years and generational. I'll say that one more time. Huh? God is not this little person huh, that talks to you and say, okay, on Monday, do this. On Tuesday, do that. On Wednesday, do this. Usually God will tell you one thing that takes you years or generations to do. Huh? Because God don't think like, a, I, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Huh? My ways are not your ways. Huh? And my thoughts are not your thoughts. Huh? We got to stop putting God on our level and start coming up to God's level. Huh? And we got to understand that when God gives us instruction, huh, many times that instruction will take us into a couple of years. Huh? That instruction... 
got to show you something. Uh, God showed me back in 2004 uh, that I would be in politics. I didn't get in politics until 2017. Uh, that was over 13 years of God showing me something, uh, but I had to get on the journey to do it. Uh, and I come to tell you right now, the reason why you all this shout uh, is because you ain't even seen what God has in store for you yet. Uh, but what he did tell you was, I will bless you. Uh, can I get somebody to give God a praise right now? Uh, on all the blessings that's coming your way. Huh? Matter of fact, you need to make your hater mad right now huh? because they are mad at what you got right now huh? and they don't even know you ain't even touched the tip of the iceberg huh? or where God is getting ready to take you. Huh? I just need you to hit that key one time. Huh? I need you to give God the best praise you got right now huh? and say, God, I'm ready for my blessing. Oh, ha. yes, God. Ha. And so one thing you got to understand is fear ha. makes you listen to outside influences. Number three, ha. you got to be careful who you listen to when you're scared. Ha. Because the first thing the devil will always do, Tina, ha, is give you bad advice. Ha. The devil will try. People don't understand ha, that every blessing is not from God. Ha. Some blessings will come from Satan. Ha. You better go back to when Jesus was talking. Uh, he was in the fast. Ha. And when he got through fasting, the devil came to him and said, I'll give you this, this, and this. Huh? And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Huh? You got to evaluate the thing that you think is a blessing. Huh? And see, does it line up with the future God told you? Huh? Every job ain't from God. Huh? Every man and woman ain't from God. Huh? Every promotion ain't from God. Huh? Anything that pulls you from the fullness of God, huh? it could be an obstacle. God, help me teach. Huh? You got to know the difference huh, between a pathway huh, and a deroute huh, and a detour. Huh, a pathway and a detour. Huh. Many times when we're driving, we'll see detour. Huh, and it'll take us in some strange streets. I cannot afford to be on crazy detours huh, in that little fancy car that First Lady got. Huh. I have to budget at least $1,500 every eight months for tires huh, because First Lady just had to have... Huh, this expensive car huh, that don't have but two inches of rubber huh, which means every time I hit a pothole over 40 miles an hour, huh, I destroy a $400 tire huh, and I don't just usually destroy one huh, I destroy both of them huh, and here's the problem, I can't buy four in a set huh, because the fronts are 18s huh, and the back is 20s huh. here's the next problem, huh, they're not ordinary tires, huh, they have to be ordered, huh and many times when we've had a flat, huh, the stores were closed. Huh? But you know what saved us is? Huh? When you pay that much for a tire, usually the type of tire it is, is a run flat. Huh? Which means that even though the air is gone, huh, it's still strong enough to take the load. Y'all gonna catch this in a second, huh? I didn't hit a bump in the road, huh? It's trying to hinder my progress, huh? But because I got so much value, whoa, God, help me in here, huh? I can still make it to the destination that I needed to be, huh? And I come to tell you right now, huh? I have to be careful on detours. My wife and I, we're driving and we're easing on, on, on railroad tracks. And, and Sister Linda, we're easing over potholes, huh? And many times, all oh, you ought to see us. When we hit a pothole, we did it the other day. All of us, we just pause, our hearts start, <gasps> Because we know that's $400 we just hit, huh? If we hit enough, boom, that's $800 we just hit, huh? And I'm looking at, she ain't gonna pay for it, huh? That's coming out my play money, huh? And now I'm angry, huh? Because I now I don't want this fancy car no more, huh? Give me a Ford, huh? Give me one of Marcus trucks where I can be like a, a, a Tucker truck and just roll over everything, huh? And I'm, I'm at the point where I understand now, huh? That it is dangerous if you don't stay on the road that God has put you on huh? because if you do not watch it you may destroy the very thing huh? that has value in your life huh? and the last time we hit a pothole so hard huh? the man said you need a whole wheel alignment huh? well this ain't no ordinary car I got a BMW 6 series huh? that wheel alignment costs as much as some people's car notes huh? and I was looking at the man like are you kidding me huh? when my brakes went out the brakes cost $1800 huh? and all the panels brother Darius so found out what it is to drive he wanted that fancy Mercedes, huh? And then when he had to take it in to get fixed, huh? He almost had tears in his eyes. He was talking to me, um, Dad, huh? Can I come to the bank of Doris, huh? I said, what do you want to withdraw, Mr. Doris, huh? I need to borrow $1,200, huh? Uh, what kind of collateral do you have, Mr. Doris, huh? And he looked at me and said, but I'm your son. I said, I don't care, huh? I need to know, can you pay me back, huh? You got to be careful, here it is, huh? What detour the devil puts you on, huh? Because you may not be able to afford the damage, huh? And I come to tell you, 
right now. Be careful of the obstacles in your life. Because when you're in fear, the devil will make you think something is there that's not. Oh, I remember my wife one time I had to make her pull over and I'm almost done, Darius. I feel some tugging in my spirit. But when my wife gets sleepy, she starts seeing things in the road. And she had me laughing one day. Because we was driving and I was tired and she was tired. Huh? And she said, babe, do you see that monster? Huh? And I said, babe, I don't see no monster. Huh? She said, babe, I see monsters in the road. Huh? I said, babe, ain't no monsters in the road. Huh? She said, babe, it's a monster right there. I said, well, hit it then. Huh? Run it right over. Huh? I come to tell you right now, huh? you got to be careful when you got fear in your life. Huh? Because when you got fear in your life, huh? you'll hear things from the wrong people. Huh? You'll see obstacles that you shouldn't have. Huh? And you'll see things things that you don't see. Huh? It around you make you feel like you're in a prison cell. Huh? But the next thing that fear will do. Huh? Yeah, Lord. Huh? The fear does is it causes doubt. Huh? It causes you to think huh? that what God has told you. Huh? He can't bring it to pass. Huh? I don't care what you're going through right now. Huh? I come to let you know huh? that God huh? has given you the ability huh? to get you through that trial. Huh? I came uh, to let you know uh, that God uh, will bring you out all right. Uh, you just got to have the faith. Uh, say yeah. Uh, yes, God. Uh, you cannot have doubt. Uh, and that's what Paul was telling Timothy. Uh, don't you doubt that you're the pastor of this church. Uh, don't you let your age cause doubt. Uh, don't you let people make you think uh, that you're not qualified. Uh, because if I put you here, uh, there's something down on the inside. Uh, that's older than your age. Huh? I need somebody out there huh? to remind yourself of what God did for you. Huh? There was a time in your life huh? when you didn't think you was going to come out of it. Huh? But somehow, some way, huh? God, huh? he brought you out. Huh? And that's to let you know huh? that he's able to do exceedingly, huh? abundantly, yeah. Huh? Above all that you can ask or think. Huh? I came to let you know huh? that your faith huh? has to be greater than your fear. Huh? Because if God said it, huh? that settles it. Huh? Fear causes doubt. Huh? Fear makes you forget huh? the truth of God. Huh? But I come to let you know huh? that sometimes facts huh? will be trumped by truth. Huh? The facts may say huh? that you got cancer in your body. Huh? But the Bible is truth. Huh? And I heard truth say huh? that by his stripes I am healed. Huh? The facts may say huh? that you ain't got no money in your bank account. Huh? But I heard truth say my God uh, shall supply all my needs. Uh, the facts may say uh, that somebody is after you, uh, but I heard truth say, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley uh, of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear uh, no evil. Uh, I came by to let you know uh, that God uh, is truth in your life, uh, and you better learn uh, to look fear in the face uh, and say, I may be scared, uh, but my faith this stronger. I'm not telling you huh, that you won't get scared. Huh? I'm not telling you huh, that you won't be fretful. Huh? But what I am saying, huh, you better dig down deep in yourself huh, and say, for God I live huh, and for God I die. Huh? And if God said it, huh, I'm going to run with my scared self huh, until God give me strength. Huh? Look at your neighbor and tell him, huh, you better praise him even if you're scared. Huh? You better pray while you're scared. Huh? Speak in tongues while you're scared. Huh? Because after a while, uh, I heard uh, the Bible say uh, that them that know they God uh, shall be strong uh, and do exploits. Uh, there's something about it uh, when you begin to pray, uh, when fear comes over you. Uh, something down on the inside uh, makes you build up. Uh, I remember one time uh, I had to fight a guy uh, when I was about 5'7". Uh, he was my best friend at the time. Emil had to be uh, about 6'4". Uh, we got into a fight uh, in front of my yard. Uh, this was a big old joker. Uh, Marcus, you remember Emil Moorhead. Uh, and we got into a fight. Uh, I was scared at first. Uh, but when he hit me, Sheldon, uh, my fear turned to anger. Uh, and I got angry. Uh, and I put a move on him uh, that my daddy had taught me. Uh, and by the time it was over with, uh, I was the one on top. Uh, I came to let you know. No, huh? you better learn huh? 
huh, to understand huh, the reason why you don't need to be scared huh, is because you're not fighting huh, by yourself, huh, but your daddy huh, has gave you something huh, called the Holy Ghost. Huh, yeah! Huh, and when you got the Holy Ghost, huh, you got power, huh, power huh, to cast out the devil. Power to heal the sick. Power to raise the dead. Power to call those things that are not as though they are. Power to speak over your family. Power to bind generational curses. Power to call wealthy. Power to speak over your life. I dare you right now. In the name of Jesus. When I count to three, use your power and call out your name and then let God know that when I call my name, I'm calling every blessing. I'm calling every miracle. I'm calling every decree. I'm calling everyone that has spoke over my life that it comes to pass. When I say one, two, three, type your name in the chat, but make sure you yell it. One, two, three, down. Yeah! Yes, God! Some of y'all need to call your children. Call your spouse. Call your boss. Call somebody you care about. We're going to do it one more time. When I say one, two, three, call your name out. And don't say it in fear, but say it in power. One, two, three. Hey! Hey! Yeah, yeah, yes, God, yes, God, I may have fear, but I'm going to let the power kick in over my life. I got the discipline to understand that God is not going to let me die. God is not going to let my miracle die. God is not going to let my promise die. God. It's not going to let it go to waste huh? because he's able to do huh? what he said he would do. Huh? God's word should not perform, huh? should not return it to a void, huh? but it shall accomplish huh? the thing he sent it out to do. Huh? I came to let you know huh? that all you got to do huh? is speak God's word back. Huh? Don't you be scared huh? because of a hater. Huh? Don't you be scared huh? because of a liar. Don't you be scared, huh? Cause they laughing at you, huh? Don't you be scared, huh? Cause they questioning you, huh? I heard huh? the Bible say, huh? They count it all joy, huh? When diverse temptation, huh? When trouble come, huh? When trials come, huh? When things come your way, you need to get excited because that means that you made the devil mad. I ain't playing with the devil. I don't like him and he don't like me. So why should I be scared? I got power. I got love. I got a sound mind and I'm going to do what God said. I'm going to preach what God said. I'm going to go where God said. I'm going to be who God said. Say yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Listen up, listen up, listen up. Listen up, listen up. I was 28 years old and I was leaving a powerful church. And I, and I was, I had a lot of influence in that church. My daddy was pastoring. Uh, and my, my, my son's godfather was, uh, I was at his church. And Jonathan, I was scared. I was 28 years old. My wife was 26. And the Lord told me to pastor. I didn't have a good credit. Didn't have but $500 to my name. But I knew what the Lord said. And I was scared to death. Because I didn't want to do it in the first place. Huh? But when God tells you to do something. 
Lord. Uh, when God tells you to do something, uh, you better get out there and do it. Uh, I didn't know that daddy was going to die. Uh, six months later, uh, a year and a half later, uh, my son's godfather retired. Uh, I got to tell you something. Uh, when you do what God said, uh, it's because of timing. Uh, God's got a blessing uh, with your name on it. Uh, and all you got to do, uh, I hear you first lady, uh, is have a yes in your spirit. Uh, yes to your will. Uh, yes to your way. Uh, I will not be scared. Uh, but I say yes all day. Uh, clap your hands wherever you are right now. And give God praise. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo. I, I've had so many instances. People were celebrating me when I became deputy mayor. I was scared as the devil. I didn't know what deputy mayor was. I don't have a political science degree. Man, I didn't know what, what that means. I, was, I didn't know if people would start hating me because I became became close to the powers that be. And people that don't understand power hate power. So I started becoming close to the most powerful men in the city. All of a sudden, I became a sellout. Our people fuss about, we need more black folks in office. Then when we get in office, then we don't want them no more. So I became a sellout. I hadn't even did nothing yet, became a sellout. And I was like, Lord, I don't want my name messed up. God said, well, I'm taking you. You can't be worried about people. Became deputy mayor. Then the senator called me and said, I need you to be a representative and go vote for me in Sacramento. I got nervous about that. Well, it's not the party that most of my church belongs to. They are, they're all Democrats and the Republican party is calling for me to vote for them. Yeah, they're going to they gonna think that, and I, 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 don't, I don't care for 98% of stuff that Trump say, but because I'm Republican, they think I like Trump, you know. I just like what the Republicans stand for as far as the values of the Republican Party. And I said, well, Lord, if I do that, that's going to expose what I believe in politics. And all I've done is preach Jesus to my church. I ain't really preach politics like that. God said, well, I'm taking you. You can't be scared of people. Then when I became councilman, had a young man, and I'm the reason why he's sitting there. I'm the reason why they was able to march and not have no issues with the police. And I talked to the council and I talked to the sheriffs and I talked and I got young people yelling, we don't trust politicians and we don't trust y'all. Like, hey, 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 I'm the reason why you sitting here talking to the mayor right now. What's wrong with you? And the Lord said, don't, don't take it personal. This is why I got you here. It ain't about whether people like you because there's nothing they can do about the favor that's over your life. And you know what I found out? Some of the main people that don't like me are some of the main ones that has to call me for a favor. Some of the main ones that don't like me are the main ones that have to call me for people that have turned on me, people that have acted crazy with me, folks that have acted funky with me, acted funny with me. And if I wasn't saved, I'd be laughing at them. Like, you, you, I know this ain't the phone call that's calling me. Those are the main ones now calling me, asking me, can you hook me up? Can you do this? Can you do that? And to be honest with you, this is what's funny to me. This is why I guess if I wasn't councilman tomorrow, it would make a bit of difference to me. Because those power positions, to me, it, it means nothing when I stand before God. My real job is to be a man of God, not a politician. I just happen to be a, a man of God that's a politician. I'm not, that politician ain't my main who I am. I'm, I'm not. If I happen to be rich, I'm just a man of God that became rich. Does that make sense? You guys are not defined by, by things. You're defined by God. So stop worrying about, listen, anybody that's doing something great in God, you're going to have, I love what T.D. Jakes say, there's 8 billion people in the world. There's bound to be some folks that don't like you. <laughs> if you got 2 billion people that like you, that means you got, you got what? 6 billion that don't like you? Uh, 4 billion that don't like you? So, I mean, you can look at it as I got six, I got two billion people that got my back, or I got four billion people that don't, don't have my back. Stop that fear. And this is what Paul is telling Timothy. He said, look, man, stop worried about who don't feel you're qualified, who feel you're too young, who feel this. He said, trust me, you got power, love. So love the people. Operate in my power. And then make sound decisions. 
and the maturity in your decisions, the self-discipline that you carry yourself. Sam, I found out that just because a person old don't mean that they mature. Age has nothing to do with maturity. Age has nothing to do with wisdom. Most of our, our geniuses and millionaires, billionaires, became geni they became billionaires before they were 30 years old. And they have nothing to do with age. It had to do with drive and work ethic and, and they just had a product and, they, and it was disciplined enough to go through with it. The only difference between most of us and being a millionaire is that the millionaire had the discipline to go through. The only reason why most of us don't have a degree is because it wasn't that all the people that finished college got straight A's. They just had the discipline to go through the four-year course. That's as simple as that. They had the discipline to get the paper. There's a lot of smart people that don't have a degree. So I'm telling you right now, do not allow fear. The fear of what pe people, person, places, and things. That's what I want to say. That's what I'm getting to. Don't allow fear of person, places, and things to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. If God has called you, if God has told you, settle it within your spirit. Get it right with the God as, Lord, just, just show me how and what. Understand. Let me go over these, these points one more time. Number one, make sure that fear doesn't become a prison. Number two, make sure fear doesn't make you lose your focus. Number three, make sure fear doesn't make you listen to outside influences. Number four, don't allow fear to create obstacles that's not there. Number five, don't let fear cause doubt. And the last one is, don't let fear make you forget about God's truth. The word of God trumps any fact in your life. It may be a fact that you're going through something. But truth says that you got the power to overcome that fact. It was a fact. Many records are, are made. It's a fact. You run a mile in six minutes. That used to be a record. But somebody said, I can break that. It wasn't truth till they did it. But I come to tell you, everything that we need done, Jesus already did. So that's why it's truth over our facts. The Bible is truth. I know the word of God. I know the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong. That's an old school song that they used to say. But I want you to know right now, God is able to do the impossible. So listen to me. Your faith is bigger than your fear. Say that. Your faith is bigger than your fear. My faith is bigger than my fear. God's going to give you something that's going to shake the foundation. Wait, wait, wait a minute, God. I don't think Moses was scared. David was scared. Uh, Jephthah was scared. Man, uh, you got Gideon was scared. You, you got all kind of folks that started off fearful. But that Peter got scared and left Jesus hanging. But when it was like, the Bible said Jesus feared the cross himself. But he went on with it because his faith was bigger than his fear. And I'm telling you right now, whatever God tells you to do, it may scare you, but don't let it paralyze you. Dig deep within the power that's in you. Let's pray. There may be somebody out there that may need God in their life. You may say, Pastor, I've been operating in fear. I'm, I'm taking all these pills, all these medications. I've been seeing doctor after doctor. I, I, I've been talking to every person except God. I'm here to tell you that being saved doesn't keep you from problems. It doesn't keep you from situations, but it does make you come through it a lot better. You won't need a drink. You won't need weed. You won't need alcohol. You won't need drugs. You won't need an illicit partner to do sexual, crazy perverseness with. All you need is the Lord on your side. And then God will send friends, God, good godly friends your way that are speaking to your life also. The song says, I shall have. How did it go? What I decree. I believe it belongs to me. So I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. You know that, Milton? You know that? Play that for me real quick, Monty, and they'll catch it real quick. Um, I shall have Yeah. Listen, I want to pray with you. I, I know you know it. I, <laughs> I know I said the yes, wrong song. Let's pray. Bow your heads if you're out there with me right I now. Believe. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of the wrong I've been and the wrong I've done. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again on the third day. Come into my life. I make you Lord and Savior. And I'll serve you the rest of my days. If you believe that simple prayer, that's all it takes 
to be saved. That's all it takes to be in relationship with God. Let the fear just erase off of your life. I don't care what you've done. Sometimes we got to pay the consequences for some of the sins that we've done. But I declare God will get you through it. Getting saved is not going to get you out of a, a murder case if you kill it. But it can't get time reduced. It can't get you favored. If you racked, racked your body full of alcohol and drugs and now you're sick and you want to get saved, God can't heal you. But you may suffer with some stuff every now and then. It could happen either way. But whatever you've done, God is saying, I want your spirit man connected. And then we'll work on the rest. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to promise you a house, a car. I'm not going to promise you 100% help. I'm not going to promise you things that a lot of these people promise and then people walk away from God where they don't experience it. What I will promise you is God can give you peace of mind. God will help you through the pain of your sorrow. God will help you have a clearer head. He'll give you a plan. He'll give you a purpose. He'll help you with your divine destiny. I'm telling you right now, I know what I'm talking about. So let your faith be bigger than your fear. We want you to sow right now. I shall have. I shall have. We want you to sow right now. Decree, we want you to give. You'll see. Give a five. You'll see. Cash out. P.O. Box 1716, Lancaster, California, 93536. You'll also see our merchant number 661-674-5424. Listen, we love you. To everyone that may want to be a virtual member and you want to join, our secretary is checking every week to see if any of you that have been watching us want to be a part of our virtual membership. Email your name and address and how many family members there are so I can meet with you over Zoom. Admin at livingfaithcathedral.org. Admin, A D M I N, at livingfaithcathedral.org. Email us and say, Pastor, I want to be a part of the ministry. And then maybe when you come back, you may be across state and say, I still want to join. We'll meet with you over Zoom. We'll get to know you. We got all of our classes that we do in house, we do it over Zoom. So you won't miss anything. And consider sowing a seed today. We love you so much. We'll see you Wednesday night. Make sure you keep up with our Facebook page and our website page, livingfaithcathedral.org, to be a part of any of our classes. All right? So, so I'm going to speak into Sorry. the atmosphere. We get ready to go home? That's the part I want to get to. So I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. You got to speak and not be scared. We love you so much. We're going to say goodbye. We'll see you next Wednesday. We'll see you next Sunday. Speak into the atmosphere.